Okay, we've got a caution on the racetrack. It is our sixth, and uh, the word we're getting from NASCAR. Remember I told you that Brian Scott was called back in for a missing lug nut? Well, it turns out they were wrong. So what they are going to do is slow everybody down and give Scott his position back. Yeah, it's not unprecedented. That happened a long time ago. I was Earnhardt's crew chief at Rockingham, and they we made a green flag stop. Said we had a loose lug or a missing lug nut, and uh, we didn't. So they uh, did the same thing. But haven't seen that in quite a few years. 59-year-old Joe Ruckman uh, took two laps in the James Finch 09 and has pulled that car to the garage area. Forty nine eighty five seven. They they, they tied. tied. Both of them. Jeff Gordon, David Gilliland, forty nine point eight five seven. Identical laps. Well, the what would you expect? Of a second in Alabama. A damn tie. They tied. <laughs> And they the reason tied. he's upset is because how is that tie broken? Oh, yeah. <laughs> if they indeed stay there, regardless of where they end up qualifying, the tie is broken by who's highest in the owner points. Obviously, the 24 car leading the points, he would win the tie. And the fight goes on now between Buddy Baker and the White Ford and Dale Yarborough in the Red Chevrolet as they struggle around the turn heading for the finish line. They're fighting for third place. They're fighting for valuable points. They're fighting for money. They're fighting for pride. Here they come toward the finish line side by side. Door handle the door handle. I don't know who's third. Absolutely impossible for the naked eye to determine. Official finishing order. David Pearson first. Richard Petty second. Buddy Becker, Kale Yarborough. Dead heat for third. Bobby Allison fifth. The five car is back on track. After Bush. being involved in that crash, the driver is Dale Earnhardt Jr. <laughs> That's interesting. It sure is. Kyle apparently had left the racetrack thinking the car had been withdrawn. We're not sure of that. We're making that assumption. They needed a driver, and there was Jr. Denny Hamlin's chopper couldn't land here. There were cars parked on the helipad, so Eric Almirola, who qualified the car on pole, had to get in to start the race. They left Almirola in it for a while, but after leading the first 43 laps of the race, made the call to put Hamlin in. It took him a while to make the driver change. They lost a lap. It took him forever to get back on the lead lap. Then at lap 144, the free pass finally for Hamlin, and he went back around. Carl Edwards had a bad pit stop, got shuffled back in traffic, then caught a tire. That took him out of contention after dominating most of the race. And there's a three-wide pass for the race lead moments ago. Handled by Scott Wimmer and Jason Leffler. Oh, man, what a nice effort. What about it, man? He comes from California, gets stuck in the helicopter. The race is going on. He's standing down, and Stephen Wallace is fit as a backup because Stephen's sick in the car. Now he's back in his own car leading the race. He's going to wake up tomorrow morning and go, wow, I can't believe what just happened last night. And Amarola put this car on the pole. This is really, really a team effort. And started the race and will get credit for the victory should Hamlin hold on. Now watch closely on the left as the green car of Bodine will pass by and the pace car instead picks up Dale Earnhardt as the leader. What happened was uh, we, we had left Brett on the racetrack. Uh, a caution came out and theoretically he was on the tail end of the lead lap. 26, I want you to, you're going to end up being the leader. 18 laps of caution are going on now because NASCAR is trying to figure out where the scoring error was. You know, we didn't have a monitor with everybody's car and what lap time they're running and what position they're in. We didn't have any of that, so it was very easy to have scoring disputes. Pace car then picks up Brett Bodine, makes him the leader. Can Brett Bodine hold on for his first Winston Cup win? He's going to do it. Brett Bodine wins the first Union 400. Everybody was running around chaotic. I was talking to my scorer, Linda Monroe, and I said, 
what are they saying up there? And they said, Brett won the race. And she said, I'm protesting, and I'm telling them that he didn't, but Morris Mitkiff will not listen. He said, Brett Bodine won this race. End the story. And, and he was the authority. A lot of guys failed to finish. Johnson, one of them. Hendrick Engines had their struggles today, and their cars uh, not faring very well at Talladega, including Jeff Gordon. At the front of the field, I know this may sound a little different, but it's going to be the 34 of Kevin Conway. In his first Brickyard 400, he uh, stayed out at that time, and uh, we're waiting for the wave around on some of these cars. And right now, scoring shows Conway and Nemechek, Joe Nemechek, as the two that stayed out. Uh-oh. 